Hey, we're going to get set up here. We're going to uh, start recording. We got Cecil here with us, and I want to give you an opportunity to ask Cecil your question. You had a really good question. Uh, actually, a couple of really good questions I think we need to break down. Uh, why don't you go ahead and fire away at your question for Cecil? Hey, Cecil. How you doing, buddy? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, sorry about any sorry about any background noise. I'm It's kind of noisy here, but I'll do my best. But uh, basically, i um, been in business 12 years. First year, I think I did 200,000. Now I did uh, just slightly under a million, but I still have absolutely no clue whether I'm making money, losing money. Um, I have no clue how to take my Mitchell system and figure it out. Um, I've watched podcasts. I've watched their podcasts, and I understand there's a lot to it. Um, I have an accountant I've had for the whole entire time. That literally gives me no legal advice, no tax advice. And of obviously, anything I ask for, I don't expect for free. I expect to be said, well, we'll sit down for an hour and talk, and this is what it'll cost you. Um, so I have no clue if I'm paying for stuff that I could I could have the shop paying for legally. Everything I everything I ask, I mean legally. Um, and then, you know, to so that I can benefit without having to pay um, as any any additional <laughs> income tax that I'd ever that you know I had no desire to pay any taxes that I don't have to pay. Um, so I have no clue. And then I'm I've sat down and I was listening to their podcast and I'm like, okay, one I I, I literally believe I need a coach, but I have no clue how to make sure I get the right coach or the coach that fits my my business plan or if uh, if my business plan that I'm, I'm when I mean plan I don't mean financially my how I run my business and how I treat my customers. Um, I literally have no idea. I might as well just put a name, bunch of names up on the board and throw, throw a, a dart and hope I hit someone. Cause listen, we don't all get along. We don't all see eye to eye. We don't all fit. You know, not everybody yeah. you meet your friend, not everybody you meet thinks the way you do. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure I got someone that has, you know, my best interest in mm -hmm. line. Okay. And then when you're looking at an accountant, automotive is is a different a different thing. So how do I know I'm hiring an accountant that can properly set me up on my automotive business to run correctly and so that I can make as much money as possible? Am I making enough money? I have no clue. Am I paying myself enough? I have no clue. Am I paying myself too much? I have no clue. Okay. So let me let me begin. Um let me begin at, at I think the first question, and that is, um, I I'm doing a million dollars, and I don't know if I'm making money or I'm not making money. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. The minute I get on camera, I'm <laughs> Mike. I'm choking up. That's it. It's allergy season here in Utah. So, yes, sir. Here too, brother. So I so what I what I want to do, or what what you want to do when I say I am, it's like I'm thinking of I'm the shop owner, right? Because that's kind of who I am. That's fine, bro. Um, what good. what I want to do is I want to understand my business financially. So um, I have uh, parts I sell and I have labor I sell. Two things I sell. And uh, if I'm charging enough, if I'm buying at one price and selling at another, and that margin, that difference is enough, then that's what's left over after I pay for my parts. We have a thing called above the line, below the line. Yeah. Okay. So my parts uh, expense should be about 18% of my sales. I do a million dollars. I should have paid about 180,000 in parts. <coughs> oh, man. Okay. Text I can understand that. And see if he can I spent more than that. All right. So, <laughs> so, so now we have um, a problem with uh, margin, meaning I'm not, I'm not, pricing myself out correctly in order to make the profit that I need to make. Okay. So first I have to understand, you know, how the business balances, how the business should be set up financially. And so again, 18% of what I, if I did a million, 180 is all I want to pay for parts. And the way that I do that is I use a thing called the parts matrix. So when the part comes in and it costs me, a buck, I sell it for three fifty or four dollars. If it costs me a thousand dollars, maybe I sell it for thirteen hundred and fifty, fourteen hundred, something like that. 
So the, the higher the part, the less margin I make, but because it's higher dollars, I don't charge as much. It's kind of how, how it's done. Uh, then I have labor, and labor is an interesting thing because parts is real easy. We put a matrix in place as a coach, and you follow it, and we get our margin. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So the, it, the parts is usually is the easiest place for a coach to start and say, here's a matrix, you know, let's teach you guys how to use it and make sure that it's in your system. And, and just don't adjust anything. And, and, just yeah, let and, it do its thing. And then we watch and we, we pay attention to our margin because if you're following your matrix and we're still not getting our margin, it means somebody's, like, not following the matrix. Right. Okay? Or maybe it's a broken matrix. Maybe it's not right. Um, and, of course, we have, I don't know, I've worked with over a 1,000 shops, and we have matrices that we know get the job done. Okay, then we have labor. Labor becomes, it's a much more complicated formula because you think, okay, I pay my tech, you know, 30 bucks an hour. I charge 100. Um, I'm in good shape. I made $70. Yeah. And that, that's my gross profit on labor, except we've got FICA, feudal workers comp, et cetera. And then there's an, another problem with labor. You know, forget about the fact that I'm paying FICA and feudal and workers comp and days off and vacation and, you know, other things for tax. Now you add in a productivity issue. So uh, if I'm a shop doing, uh, let's say I'm $120 an hour and, uh, you know, about half of what I sell is parts, about half of what I sell is labor, mm -hmm. um, I'm worth, uh, I don't know, probably somewhere around $230 an hour with parts and labor. And so now I say, oh, I've got this tech here. And, you know, throughout the month, this is a tech that's going to probably produce Forty thousand dollars worth of parts and labor. So if I got three techs, that's a, a you know one hundred twenty thousand a month. It's a a, a million four four, I right. think. Yep. And uh, and if I'm doing a million with those three techs, and I'm paying them any kind of hourly or salary, and I, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge flat rate guy because I just don't think that's the way we want to go. Right. Uh, and a lot I of don't ticks, pay that way, by the way. Yeah, and a lot of ticks don't feel that's fair, and I, I would kind of agree with them. Um, but if we if I'm hourly or salary in any way, and my tech is say seventy cent seventy percent productive, so instead of doing a million four, I'm doing a million. Uh, that would be about sixty eight percent, but we're going to round it to seventy because yeah. then the math becomes easier. Then my thirty dollars an hour that I'm charging. Uh, or that I'm that I'm paying my tech, then then my load. So now I'm at say thirty eight dollars. That's what I'm paying, and then I add the fact that he only produces five point eight hours a day instead of eight that I yeah. can sell. Yeah, boy. And my cost goes up to about fifty six bucks an hour. And if I'm selling at one twenty, and I'm, most shops they're like, well, my my median labor rate or my average labor rate, you know, what I normally charge is one twenty. But they're not really getting 120, right? Because right. I've got comebacks and I've got uh, you know to work. some discounted things, yeah. and then I we always have shops that think um, you know I'm doing uh, simple jobs. I want to be competitive in my marketplace, so I don't want to have an oil change where I'm charging 120 bucks an hour, right? So I'm going to do 60 bucks an hour when I do an oil change. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you when you blend all that together, you may have 120 posted rate, but you're really getting 98. Right. Okay. And so even at 98, if your tech cost is 30, you know, I'm still doing okay. You know, yeah. I've, I've still got 67 percent margin or so. So right. I'm still okay. I still pay my bills. But if I'm paying 56, and I'm getting 98. The difference is not enough to actually pay my bills and leave money in my bank. Yep. Okay. So, so that's I need to understand the business financially, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna put a sales thing in here. We have a really great class that is I think it's titled "Everything You Need to Know About Finance for the Shop," and it it goes through all of the calculations and all of the numbers. And that's on uh, weartheinstitute.com. It's on our learning management system, gearforshops.com. So, yeah. so that's a great thing to kind of start with. And it, I think it's two hours or it might be four. But, but it kind of goes through kind of all the formulas and this is what is really going on in my company. All right, now, let's say I do everything right. 
I want to pay about 20% of my sales to labor. So again, if I do a million dollars, I have $200,000 to pay tax, assuming that they're 100% productive. Right. Okay? So that gives me a cost of goods. In other words, in order for me to produce one hour of parts and labor of um, uh, 32%, uh, uh, no, 38, sorry, 20% for my tech pay and 18% for my parts. And that gives me a gross profit of 62%. And, and some, some coaches will say load the labor, some will say not. If I'm using loaded labor, then my gross profit needs to be 62 cents on the dollar. If I'm using unloaded labor, it needs to be 72 to 74 because I have those other costs. Right. So now, if you did a million dollars, you should have $620,000 left after you pay for parts and tax. Okay. And now you put in your salary because you are... Uh, part of the company, and what should you make? Well, if you did a million dollars, and you're probably not making a hundred thousand in salary, then you're probably not paying yourself enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and replacement cost. Needs yeah. To be if I had to replace myself yeah. in my yeah. company, what would that be? And 100%. and and also, you're talking to a a guy who used to be a shop owner, used to be a tech, used to be a service advisor, who now is a coach. And I believe that we don't pay ourselves enough in this industry. And I think yeah. every good tech should make, Dave's going to kick me. He's going to speak up. <laughs> at, at, Depending uh, on at, your area. At least, Go ahead. <laughs> at least 100 grand, you know, yes. or more in some areas because yeah. of the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And maybe less in a few areas because of cost of living, but probably more, right? And then every owner should also get paid. And the owner gets paid in two ways. One is my salary because I work in the business. And the second is the net profit that's left because I'm an S Corp, an LLC, or even a sole proprietorship, that money, that profit passes through to me. Mm -hmm. So on my taxes, even if I didn't take the money, even if I spent that money somewhere else or whatever, it shows up if my company made profit, I, it, whatever I made in salary plus that profit, I get taxed on. Yeah. Okay. So there are strategies that your accountant should use to make sure you're not paying any more tax than you should. And so we'll talk accountants in a minute. I want to finish this this financial piece. Okay. So I'm paying myself. I'm paying for my service advisors if I have them. I'm paying for uh, my marketing six to nine percent. Uh, sales would be eight to ten percent. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the rest, the other fixed expenses, rent, utilities, um, the truck, the insurance, the bank costs. You know, when I take a credit card, they charge me money. Uh, yeah. All of that should be about 25%. And if I do it all right and I pay 18% for parts and 20% for techs and then I pay 10% for service advisors and, you know, say 7 or 8% for marketing and I... 25% for fixed expenses, I have 20%, 21%, 18%, somewhere right in there left over, and that's my net profit. Yep. Okay, so when I understand my business financially, I, I understand that I'm going to use a parts matrix, and if I don't, then I'm going to do a million dollars worth of business. There's going to be no money left in the pile, okay? Nothing yep. for me. And we have too many shop owners because they don't understand the business as a, in a way, I say it's a financial machine. It's an engine, you yeah. know, and, yep. and, and an internal combustion engine. Uh, we won't talk about motors right. or um, generators. We'll talk yeah. about an internal combustion engine needs four things to run properly, yep. right? Fuel, air, compression at the right time in the right place, and spark at the right time in the right place. Yep. And if all of those things are maximized, I have an engine that runs at its peak. Yeah. If they aren't, then I have an engine that runs like crap or doesn't run at all. Yep. Okay, so do you have an engine where all of those things are at their peak or do you have an engine where, you know, two of your cylinders out of six are not firing, right? Because yeah. at the end, you don't get performance. Well, you know, and, and to uh, Tony's question, right, like some of the things that we see all the time, and, and, you know, he's asking about the accountant. 
And the reality is, is that we can't depend solely on our accountant. We have no. to know what the, no. the chart of accounts needs to look like. Yes. We need to understand how the P&L is supposed to look. We're, we're responsible. Oh, you're, you're, you're overcomplicating this for poor Tony here. He, what Cecil just broke down is know your parts, your cost of parts, and know your cost of labor. Yeah, Both of, course. of those things can be, can be derived Pretty simple. simply yeah, from your SMS. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and then I know, and then I know that I'm making the gross profit margin and the gross profit dollars that can pay my bills yes. and leave money in my pocket. Yes, and that's first. Okay, yeah. first if you can get that, you're that's, you're fifty percent of the way there. Right, but. that's before accountant and or quote unquote bookkeeper. Well, that's kind of what I'm getting at is <clears> that that unless you understand all of that, the accountant's not going to be there to save you. The accountant can't save your well, finances. That's a that's a different conversation. And right? unfortunately, most of the accountants that I have run across. You know, when I go into, as a consultant, whenever anyone in my company goes into a business to consult, the first thing we want to do is look at some reports and some P&Ls, profit and loss statements, okay? Mm -hmm. Because those are going to tell us if parts margin, labor margins are right, and if we're making money, et cetera. Right. And and unfortunately, out of 10,000 profit and loss statements that I have looked at, I can name on one hand and maybe one foot, the number of P&Ls that were done correctly and that were accurate. Yeah. I have had so many times where I've looked at a P&L. We had a guy come in, $300,000 in IRS, IRS debt. And I'm looking at his P&Ls and I'm going, hold on. Your accountant has overstated your income. They double stated certain income. And so we need to get in there forensically and say, wait a minute, Mr. IRS, I need a new... I need to file differently. Yep. And we were able to bring that $300,000 in IRS debt down to 80000 because the accountant had not done his job correctly or her job. That 80000 is a whole lot easier to pay, isn't it? Oh. And, you know, within and a year. That's with, what I'm worried about. Yeah. Is having the, having the right person. And how do you know that? How well, do you know you're hiring the right accountant? I got an accountant. Yeah. And he's doing nothing for me. And well, I'm not, the problem, I'm not though, bad-mouthing is, him, but maybe he doesn't know. Well, well hold on, hold on. The, <laughs> the problem is, you like, at the very – I mean, it's impressive. You you almost had a million to not knowing any of these numbers. That's that's incredibly impressive. But Absolutely. I, um, I, 100%. It's my fault. Well, no, it's still impressive. But I got to learn how to fix it. Trust me. You, there, we t- talked <laughs> to a lot of the, shop owners the, the, that do $250,000 yeah, a year, don't know any other numbers. To hit almost a million and not know any, not any know of your numbers. Not knowing is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. Well, so the the very first podcasts. thing though, we'll just we'll say the podcast did it. So there you go, Ken. yeah, or uh, Cecil. <laughs> um, but at the very but beginning Lucas though, said, you have to have those those basics down in the SMS. You have to start there. You're stressing over who, how do I find an accountant? If you don't know your cost of parts, you don't know your cost of labor. You're not producing the right number on that invoice. When you go to sell that ticket, how do you know that you're selling it for the right amount of money? You don't know that if you don't have the very basics down. How do I mark up the parts? How much am I spending on labor? And is it the right amount? Because that gross profit dollar amount is what's going to pay the rest of the bills. Once you have that exactly. down, you have to have that down first, like baby steps. That has to be done first. Yeah, absolutely. Then start worrying about, okay, how are my chart of accounts set up? And am I spending too much on these expenses? Am I not spending enough? Am I spending the right amount on marketing? And then how do I then at the, at the end of the day, how do I differentiate my earned, my, my retained earnings into a separate savings account that I don't touch and distribute? And then what am I paying myself? And am I paying myself uh, appropriately? Do I set up an ask? All those are after the fact. You have to have those basics down first. And, 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 but you got to know how to know it. Yeah, and well, you got to know how to hire a coach. You got to so, make sure you know. Like I said, I can put fifty coaches on the wall and throw it right. I don't know any of them. Baby steps, dear. Baby sure steps. You're, still, you're, you're still going down the wrong path, though. You're freaking out about something else differently. You you need to you need to get that in the system first. Get your Mitchell set up properly. I, it, Cecil just laid it out for you. Go take that class. I don't know how much. Yeah, that I don't know, fifty nine dollars. I mean, fifty nine dollars. I'll, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you for free. The <laughs> just <laughs> take the class. I mean, and, and as far as is is hiring a coach, every shop needs a coach. Uh, I, I mean, frankly, I have a coach. Um, uh, uh, I have a coach for my son who works in my business who does yeah. amazing things, but it, the coach it, helps. Here's the thing: is is it scary for an owner? Right? Was it was scary when I hired my first coach? Yeah, because I wanted to find somebody who aligned with me ethically. 
right? I want well, he, he's 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 recognized that he needs a coach, but he's he doesn't know what coach to to go with. And what well, to, I mean, let, you let's said, talk about why Tony. Why do you? What are your biggest fears of hiring a coach? What are the things that well, that he, you're he thought would have? he thought that the guy's not going to be aligned with him because he already answered the question. Like he's he just, he's afraid 10, that it's not going to align with him. Ten thousand dollars later in coaches' fees and looking around and going, I still don't understand. The, the ten thousand dollars would be wasted if you don't do what the coaches tell you to do. Don't hire a coach and then not do what they tell you to do because you're going to waste your money. Well, it doesn't yeah. matter so, what coach you hire. So, so hang on, because there's enough there's enough content from coaching companies out there, all right, that you can go, you can look at Bill Haas, you can look at Rick White, you can look at Cecil Bullard, you can look at the Institute, and there's free content and there's inexpensive content like the two hour class, and yeah. you say, and you watch it and you go, oh. Sh- I, that guy sounds like he's good. You know, he sounds like he knows what that. he's talking I can about. Relate to that. Yeah. And also, there's you know, there's podcasts. But besides yours, there's other podcasts where coaches are interviewed and coaches participate. Yeah. And if you watch a few of those, you start to say, "Wow, this guy sounds like he's got a good, firm moral background, just like us. He doesn't want to cheat anybody. He doesn't. You know, he wants to treat customers exceptionally well. Um, but you also have to understand, as a coach, from my perspective. If you're not charging enough, and I go, look, your your parts margin's all screwed up. You're making thirty two percent, and you really need to make fifty eight. But you know, we'd be fifty two would be a hell of a difference. And then I say, so we need to put this matrix in place. And you say, I, I can't do that because then I'm ripping my customers off. Then you yeah. and I are going to have another conversation because yeah. I have to make a fair profit. That's that's fair. I work hard. Most shop owners they work their butts off. Yeah. And and frankly, at the end of the day, they don't make enough money, and they feel bad. Because they think the guy that's making money is actually ripping off the client, right? Uh, my my company, right. we have a, a a tremendous moral, ethical, and uh, legal statement. Three pages of look. We we want to do what's moral, ethical, and legal. It is one of our foundational principles, and we will not participate with other companies in the industry where we don't think. Now, again, I'm not calling them bad people. I'm just saying. My morals don't agree with theirs, yeah, and so I right. won't participate. Yeah, okay, but well, we we find people that that match our morals, our ethics, and those are the people that we deal with. You know, so you need to be really careful about when you're talking to these different coaches, and you want to try to talk to to as many as you can because Cecil's right, and you're absolutely right. Like personality wise, they may not match up. You may not like the guy's voice or the way he talks to you or whatever. Right? You might look like but, Santa Claus and you hate Santa. <laughs> I don't know. Right? I'm, I'm a but high one, strong person. I need someone that can deal with a high strong person. Uh, I, I can't. And, that, and that's fair. But here's the, the thing you, you need to realize that if the coach is not pushing your buttons and pushing you emotionally, physically, where you're having to, to go way outside of your comfort zone, that coach is not going to do well for you. Because if you just oh, no, if you just hire not. somebody to appease you, to tickle your ear, make you feel good, and yeah, I'm doing the right things. I just need to to nope. buckle down, and eventually it'll it'll all work out. That's not the right person for you. So just realize you're going to have some some knockdown drag be some, outs, some discomfort. Right? Yeah. yeah, but on the other side, I need a coach that can deal with a high strung person. Some so, people can't deal with so me just because just my so hands you, are moving. I'm talking. Yeah. I'm I'm you know. Just so you understand. Um, I've been doing this personally for 21 years. I have dealt with and coached some of the most high-strung, ADHD, um, dyslexic, uh, you name it. I have coached those guys. And I am a very direct, very straightforward person. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I I believe I'm very honest, you know, because that's how I try to be. Yeah. And... uh, um, I don't have a problem with high strong guys. If I did, I probably wouldn't have a company, <laughs> frankly, because there's a lot of them. I mean, heck, there's, well, there's three of them back. in this yeah. room right now and one on the phone. <laughs> he was looking at well, you, there's David. There's so many things oh. you don't know until you know it. I was listening to a podcast yeah. and one of the guys said, you know, you need to, you need to look at your, your, your payouts and verify, you know, that you're not paying say just pick a company uh napa and you're not paying them sixty thousand dollars a year and then you go and look but you're only billing forty thousand dollars a year 
Well, there's, you know, the, those are things I never thought about. Yeah, I never thought to look about what's rolling out the door that I'm not getting charged. Yeah, there's, that there's, I'm not charging for. So there's other things like if if you have a good coach, um, they understand uh, the financials themselves. So if I look at a company and uh, we've got a good parts matrix in place, and it seems like the service advisor is kind of holding the line, uh, whoever's selling the owner. And, and then we look at our parts margin, our parts margin is 28, 32%. Then I'm starting to look for other holes, you know, yeah. uh, our parts leaving that aren't getting on, on work orders. Um, well, uh, does the owner have a boat and, uh, and or a race car or whatever else. Right. And, <laughs> and so, you know, a good coach that really understands the numbers, even a good accountant, frankly, that understands the numbers would be able to look at your numbers and say, we have a problem here. He may not. Uh, a good accountant may not say, I, I know exactly what that problem is. A good coach probably will. Yeah. At least with three questions, well, we should probably be able to figure it out. But I mean, here, here's the thing about that, right? Is because I, I think we get blinded by the SMS, right? We get blinded by the shop management system. And, and we just go in there and it says, well, it says I've got 60% parts margin. Yeah, well. Uh, but that's not where the money came out. Yeah, well, because the other the other problem with the, the, the SMS is it's a gigo system, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. So, it, you know, and and your P&L should not line up with your SMS. In other yeah. words, my profit on my parts margin in my SMS system should be higher than my P&L. Yeah. Because the SMS doesn't know when the owner takes a quarter oil and puts it in his car or when one of the techs, you know, puts an yep. oil filter on their car or something like that. And, and you know, if I'm off by 2%, then I don't worry about it. But if it's off by like 20%, That's holy crap, we've got an issue yeah. we need to figure yeah. out. And a good coach it should be able to see that and point that out. Now, also, when you're looking to hire a coach, you really want to stay away from huge long-term contracts. I really yeah, think for that's sure. a mistake, 100%. right? 100%. And, and so, you know, um, uh, frankly, you know, we bring in coaching clients and we, we're, we're successful, I don't know, 96, 97% of the time. Uh, three, 4% of the time, uh, we just don't jive with that person. Or that person, I've had people that were abusive, which I will not put up with, Yeah. right? Um, I mean, you can get upset and you can, you can say, damn it and crap and this isn't working and I'm not, see, so I'm yeah. not happy and I'm, I'm all good with that. But the minute you cross the line and, and you start being abusive, I'm like, you know, no, we're yeah. not playing that game. Yeah. Right? Same with clients. You, you respect shop. me. You respect my people. I respect you. I respect your people. That's how we work. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, you want to, you, so these 3% that we didn't, we're not successful with, we also have people that they 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 talk a good game. They uh, they seem to understand what you're telling them, right? Hey, we got to put this parts matrix in place. You're going to put it in place, yeah? Okay, great. Can I help you? No, I'll, I'll get it done. And then two months later, it's never done. Nothing ever gets done. Yeah. And a good coach at that point will say, it, I, I call it a come to Jesus meeting. Yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, you're paying me. I'm taking my time. I feel like my time is wasted. And your money's wasted. Let's not be, let's be friends, but let's not be clients, yeah, right? Yeah. And a good coach, a good coaching company, uh, is going to do that with you. And I, and I kind of start that out with almost every client. Like you know, if this doesn't work out, you know, in, in two to three months, you're going to have an answer. We're going to know because right away we see some really good increases in parts margin and some of the stuff we can fix easy. Then you know we have the come to Jesus, and it's like get busy. Or let's get you out of the program. Yeah. Uh, so, Tony, let me ask you this. Hearing all this, how do you feel now? Do you have more questions? What What's your perspective now? Um, I, 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 I wholeheartedly believe I got to get control because I'm lost. You yeah. can't run a ship if you're not sitting at the helm and you don't know, you don't know direction, you don't have a compass. Um, I agree. I do not like contracts, and the reason is, no one that does business with me, as in my customers, signs some contract. I have to earn their business every day by doing a good job and keeping them happy. And I think if somebody's confident, they don't want some long-term contract. If they're confident, we're going to work. I definitely am, am lit on fire with making changes and fixing it. And um, I, I need to get it done. I definitely know I need a coach. Um, my apprehension is just finding, like you said, 
And I don't mind if I, you know, say, look, let's work, let's work three months and, and evaluate how we're getting along and whatnot. Um, we do, we Something don't, like that would work great. Yeah, we, we don't do it in long-term so, contracts because if it isn't working out, I don't want to be locked in. I don't want you pissed at me. And uh, frankly, in, you know, in, we're always reevaluating with our clients. I mean, literally, every time we talk to them, it's almost a reevaluation. Right. Um, so I, I do need to talk about accountants and bookkeepers for a moment because that's okay. in the Absolutely. question. Absolutely. Thank okay? you. So... Um, most of the people that are taking care of the accounting for, uh, there's two things, bookkeeping, the day-to-day, you know, I, I bought this part, I pay for this part, did I pay for a part I didn't buy, you know, uh, reconciling the checkbook, putting things into the right category. Like when we work with clients, we have a basic P&L setup that we want, and we'll even meet with your accountant, your bookkeeper, and say, okay, this is what we need it to look like. Yeah. I've done that, and and frankly, I've I've met with a few accountants and bookkeepers where, after the meeting, I'm calling the coach, or I'm calling the client. And I'm like, this guy's got to go. He's clueless. He has no yeah. I, no idea what the hell's going on, and right. he's not helping you, right? Mm-hmm. And and so, um, most of the time when I hire somebody, uh, they're probably an accounting company that also has a lower level bookkeeper in the mix. Yeah, and then we also have shops that just have a bookkeeper. And then at the end of the year, they, they meet with some accounting company and they do whatever. It's probably not necessarily what you want to do, okay? Um, there are a few companies in the industry that are doing a lot of automotive shops as part of their accounting. I don't know that I need that necessarily, okay. but I do need my bookkeeper and or accountant to understand how I need my chart of accounts set up and so that I can pull the right data out to be able to understand what's happening in my business, mm-hmm. okay? So now, if I have a good bookkeeper, then I'm getting a profit and loss statement every month, probably by the 20th, meaning you know, all the money that went in is in, all the money that came out is out, and here's, how you, here's what you paid for parts, here's what you paid for labor, here's what you brought in for parts and labor, and maybe there's sublet and sales tax and maybe there's hazmat and, and shop supplies uh, in that mix to right. set it up, right? So I know, what, I know what I brought in. I know what went out for those things. And then under there, here's what you paid for rent. Here's what you paid for your utilities. Here's what you paid for your truck, your gas, et cetera. And uh, in the right category so I can run a, um, a, a monthly report uh, a short report, uh, most accounting systems are using QuickBooks or some of the others out there, which most of the accounts are using QuickBooks or one of the other yeah. to, to do their thing, um, will allow a short report, which is about a page, page and a half, that tells me the basics. And then they'll also have a long report that they can run. It's about four pages long that will break out all the different insurances and what you paid. Yeah. But in the short report, it just says insurance. Insurance, right? Right. So... So you want to have that, and you want to make sure that you're getting that report in a timely fashion, which is by the 15th or the 20th of the month, the next yeah. month. And then you want to run, <clears throat> you want to look at month, this year, this month, this year, last month, uh, last year, this month, and you want to compare. And you want to have dollars and percentages there because the dollars may not make sense, but the percentages. So mm-hmm. I can look yep. at, oh, we spent more money on utilities this year in the same month than we did last year. What happened? Why? Or I spent less money on marketing. What happened? Why? Yeah. And then what I really like is a three-month, um, like right now, I'd be looking at February, March, April, and May. Those trailing three months, I like to have that on, on the same within those other with those other two columns in dollars and percentages because that tells me trend mm-hmm. where's the trend where are we moving right yeah. and so that a good bookkeeper can certainly do that okay mm-hmm. and unfortunately we have a lot of people in our industry who they don't have the skill set to be a bookkeeper they're trying to be a bookkeeper and i'm not necessarily talking about some of the companies i'm really talking about Shop owners, shop and, owners, and their yeah. families, and etc. You, you see all these P and Ls that that have sales, 
yeah, and only expenses sales. and yeah. cost of goods. Yeah, and, and that's the and end here's of the what's line. left in the pile, right? right? You know, yeah. that's it. And and so, you know, again, a good coach, a good bookkeeper can set it up or help set it up so that then I can understand it. And then what you want from a coach is help me understand it. You know, what am I looking at? So that, you know, years later, you maybe don't need a coach, at least not for that, because I learned it. We, we try to, I, I and my company really try to teach you how to understand the numbers so that you look at it and you go, oh, I can see there's a problem here, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I need to discuss this can with I, my coach and get it figured out. Can I and, jump in? Yes, please. Here's, 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 okay. Here's you're, you're, you're hitting all the spots that, that is, is driving me insane. My wife and I run the whole financial part. Yeah. Okay. She's got the QuickBooks and does all that. She's very good with numbers, but she calls the accountant. What should I be tracking? What should I be doing? And I think he just doesn't understand automotive. No, I, the, I don't know. I'm not running him down. This yeah. is not a, this is not a slam fest. This is, I'm not getting what I need. Yeah. I need someone to sit down. Like you just said, I had no clue. My wife has no clue yeah. what to track. She can do it. She's smart enough to do it and input it. She has bookkeeping experience, but she doesn't know what, like, so I need someone to sit down and explain. I need these right. numbers, these numbers, these numbers. And if you say, and this is the reason why, once I understand why, I'm locked in. So, but I'm I'm like I'm just I'm right. just spinning in a circle, looking around, looking for light. Right. So the other the other problem that we have as human beings. Uh, uh, risk makes us nervous. Some of us, yeah. right? I'm a high risk guy. I like I like risk. It doesn't bother me that much. Um, but uh, many shop owners and and actually many many human beings, uh, a risk keeps them from taking a step, right? So yeah. I'm not going to hire a coaching company. I know I need all this. It's driving me nuts. But I'm not going to hire a coaching company because oh my god, I might get the wrong coach. Okay. Well, if you're not signing a long term contract. Maybe you you're go. maybe yeah. you have a month or two or maybe three where you spent whatever it is. I think we're a grand a month for no, I think we're twelve hundred now for our coaching program. But you, so you spent that money, but if you didn't learn enough to and, and we didn't help you enough to pay for that money in three months, you know what? You should fire us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, and 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 earn some profit. So I have to it's there's a point where I have to say, okay, um, take the leap of faith, right? Um, yeah. I'm gonna hire a coach and and, you know, I looked at some of their stuff. I, I talked to him on a podcast or I listened to podcast. And that guy sounds like he knows what he's up to. Let's get him hired. Right. And, and there's oh, some. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Okay. So it, hang, hang on. Cause I, I, I want to go just to the accountant side of this. Okay. Because now I have a bookkeeper that knows and understands what I need because I know and understand what I need. And, and I'm at least getting information. Now I need an accountant who is willing to and able to, I, I need to meet with them a minimum of three times a year. Okay. So a good accountant, I, I'm, I'm going to meet with uh, uh, at the end of this year and tell them what my plan is for next year. So, Hey, we made this much money this year. I paid this much in taxes. I don't want to pay taxes next year. You know, how do we mitigate that? What are our plans? Cause I'm yeah. next year, I'm going to make 200,000 more. Right. And, and, and so we have that conversation. And then about mid-year, uh, June-ish, I sit down with my accountant again and I say, okay, that was the plan. Now, now we have the reality. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now what are we going to do? And a good accountant is not supposed to just do your, your tax return. A good accountant is also a coach in the sense that they're saying, hey, you know, if you go buy a truck, that's a place where you know, it may cost you uh, you know, a fifty thousand dollar truck, it may cost you twenty grand, but thirty grand of what you pay would be taxes that you would pay in anyway. So now you have a truck for twenty thousand instead of paying fifty. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, there's there there's different levels of accounts. I mean, I last year stepped out and said the the person I have is no longer adequate for me. Yeah, I, because the money uh, I'm making more money now, and I need someone that's a little more. Um, adventurous right right that has more idea of how to you know help me use the money i have to create personal wealth and not just pay taxes and lose that money right yeah. and and so 
I used to have two different accountants. I used to have the what I call the black hat guy and the white hat guy. <laughs> so the black hat guy, he would screw his mother for a nickel, right? Right. And the the, the white hat guy <laughs> would wouldn't do anything wrong ever. So I'd go to the black hat guy and I'd go, man, I'm gonna pay forty grand this year. And the black hat guy would go, oh, we could do this and this and this and this, you know. Right. And 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 then I go to the white hat guy and I'd say, okay, I want to pay forty grand. I want to pay forty grand. And he'd say, well, you know, Cecil, I don't know, you know. And I'd say, well, what if we do this? He'd say, oh no, that's that's illegal. I mean, we can't do that. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I don't want to do anything illegal. That's I don't want to go to jail and you know, I yeah. I don't want to lose my money. And and uh, then I'd say, well, what if we do this? He'd say. Man, that's really deep in the gray area. I don't know if I want to go that deep in the gray area. And then and I'd say, okay. And they say, well, what about this? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's in the gray area a little bit. But I, I think we can do that. So right. usually two or three of the things that my black hat accountant would tell me, my white hat accountant would say, yeah, we can do that. And then I'd save right. myself 20 grand right. and I'd use that money for another piece of property or you know, another investment in my business, some more marketing with, heck, I'd yeah. pay the changing the industry podcast guys so That's I could right. get out there more, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, so when you're, when you're interviewing and talking to accountant, you know, first of all, uh, we're talking different personality types and your accountant's most likely to be like a C person who needs all the boxes checked and, and, and the high energy guys that are most of the shop owners are not C personalities kind of make us a little crazy. Right. Right. So, um, Absolutely. So it so I'm like interviewing this guy, but I'm he's not moving at my pace, and he's not necessarily listening to me exactly how I want him to listen to me. Well, wait a minute, that's probably like a good account because his personality is such that he has to check all the boxes. Yeah. yeah. And and so he's going to move at a at a slower pace. He's going to talk in a different way. And and of course you want someone that's knowledgeable and authoritative. Uh, authoritative. Um, hey, I know tax law. I know this. And you really do when you have that meeting in June. You want that guy to go, "Hey, Cecil, you 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 need to either make more money, or make less money, or you need to do this and this." Yeah. So that at the end of the year, we're not writing a big check. Yeah. Okay. And then just before the end of the year, you know, a month and a half or so. So now we're talking. Well, tax tax wise, uh, I'm talking October, November, early November. I'm having the last meeting with my accountant for this year, mm -hmm. and that is. Here's what the reality is really going to look like. And here's what we've done so far. And my account is like, we need to put another 30000 aside for taxes or, you know, we need to buy this thing or now's the time to get this equipment that you would get anyway. Yeah. You know, it gives you, um, uh, they give you some great ideas about how to save money, make money, et cetera. So we need to do that. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. That's. Well, to me, and, and, and what and I so, expect from an accountant. Yeah, and there are some good accountants that coaching companies will say this is, you know, there's, there's. I have two or three accountants that I know that are they they work with a lot of my clients, and that's kind of one of the other things. We have um, uh, what I call uh, certified or preferred vendors that work work with us, so we look for the best of the best. Uh, you know, if, if Billy Bob podcast company wants me to go on their podcast yeah i might <laughs> but but i'm not looking for that which one's billy and which one's yeah, bob <laughs> but but i'm not looking for that i mean you know and and so with with marketing companies we want to select the best of the best to work with our clients because obviously the more successful our clients are the more they like us them yeah, you know the longer sure. they stay and all of that stuff and so you know we have three or four accounting companies that are currently working with most of our clients. And so we can say, you know, this is this would this is a good accounting company. But there's also a point like we have a couple of clients that came to me last year in November and they said, see, so I'm gonna make a million dollars this year. It's the most money I've ever made. And when you get up in the six hundred thousand a year range, um, and, and above, the accountant that you had is probably not, not the accountant you need. Exactly. Yeah. They are uncomfortable up there. Yeah, you need a you really need a money handler investment uh kind of accountant that that knows other things yeah and and so you know at different times in my business you know when i'm doing two hundred thousand, a decent bookkeeper and then a, an accountant at the end of the year is probably okay when i'm doing a million not only do i need a good bookkeeper that's going to make sure that things are are right and i can see what's going on Quickly. and i need to also understand that 
Yeah. Um, also, a good coaching company is going to put some financial reports in play that you're going to see weekly or monthly. We actually have um, a product that all of our coaching companies has that sends them a report every day with all the key numbers. And if there's a problem with a KPI, there's a video involved that explains what the KPI is and what the problem what is. What affects and, it. And, and what affects it. And what it. changes need to be made. And then yeah. we also have like online training that you can go, I want to see more. And you can take a 30 minute hour long class that's all about average repair order, right? And how you get it and what you do with it and and you know how you would improve it in your business. And so a, a good uh, coaching company is also going to set you up on some kind of a report that's not your P and L because P and L data comes, you know, a month, a, a month and a half after your a month. lagging indicator. Yeah, yeah. It's a lagging indicator. And we need something that's probably weekly that we yeah. can look at in our businesses that shows us uh, weekly. I want to look at uh, sales. How much did I sell? Yeah. Uh, I want to look at how much I finished. Right. Yep. Do, are, do we have a problem with flow? Uh, I want to look at my average repair order because are we inspecting cars properly? Are we selling properly? Yeah. Are we bringing the right customers in, and uh, I don't even look at at profit on the bottom weekly uh, because if I'm doing everything right, then I know that that profit's going to yeah. be there. Yeah. Uh, and there's one other number weekly. Oh, productivity. Like because productivity, how many how many hours did my technicians produce? Uh, is is a it's it's a leading indicator because if they're productive. And my cost of labor is going down and my profit margin is going up. Yeah. So a good coaching company is going to put you up on a, some kind of something where they can get that kind of data and then help you understand it yeah. uh, as just as part of the coaching, right? I mean, hell, we, we want you to get really good at what you do so that you know what we know, yeah. right? 100%. Um, and a good accountant so, is going to give you the the – the advice that you need, but it's going to cost you, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, go ahead. So obviously if I hire a good coach, then the, 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 the getting on board with the proper reports and the proper reporting and documenting and, and all that. So my accountant's going to have someone they can contact, she can contact and go, okay, what do I need? How do I set this up? Cause she's asking questions now that aren't getting answered. How do yeah. I enter this? Yeah. And then at tax time, it's like, well, why did you do it this way? Well, you know, that's what you told me to do <laughs> last year. Well, last yeah. year you didn't make as much, and this year you did. I mean, that's what I'm looking for is someone that I'm not – I don't want to get – listen, I, I'm very much a, a rule follower. I want to follow the right line, yeah. and I don't like surprises. I don't mind setting my hair on fire and burning down the world, but I don't like surprises. I, well, I want a coach, you know, yeah, the, I want a coach that's going to be there for me along the way and keep me from getting slammed. And, you know, the whole lure me in with a piece of bread and slam a brick upon my head. I don't want that. I want to, I want to, I want to be, stay on top of it all the way and build it and get it going and keep it going. And, 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 and that's what, and all. that's what a good coaching company yep. ought to be able to help you with. And I'll be able to help you do, but that's also what they should want. Right. The same things that you want, yes. we want uh, as, a, as a coaching company. In fact, we're so adamant about it. Literally, we have a product that we install in every one of our clients so that we can get in there and look at the KPIs, the numbers, and yeah. uh, help them. And then they get a report every day, and then they get a weekly report that also has projections like, because you've done this on Tuesday, at the end of the week, here's where you're going to end up. Yeah. Um, we're so, we, we what feel does so KPI mean? KPI is a key process indicator. Things like uh, uh, parts margin, okay. average repair order sales, those are numbers that you would look at and you would say, oh, I sold uh, I sold a million dollars. And then I would say, okay, how much of that was parts and how much of that was labor? And if 55% uh, of that was labor and 45% of that was parts, I would kind of thumbs up that. Yeah. And then I would say, okay, that's great. But if 60% uh, was uh, parts and 40% was labor... That's a that's problem. a huge red light for me as a coach, and I say, oh my gosh, we've got a problem with labor. We better figure out where that problem is and and solve that because we're losing, I don't know, two hundred thousand. Yeah, and, and and I want to just cover one more thing, and then we'll you know you guys can wrap it up or ask other questions that you want, and that is um, when you you know when you set your business up right and you ha and you understand that. 
if you're not taking 15 to 20 percent out the bottom line plus your paycheck it isn't right yeah you know things aren't where they need to be well i'm way off brother yeah and most shops it's not a problem with accounting or bookkeeper or even paying the irs the problem is i'm not getting margin in the first place i'm not really making the grocery margin yeah right and so by the time i do take money out of my company there's nothing left and then my accountant at the end of the year says you got to write a twenty thousand dollar check and i'm like what the hell for i didn't make any money but on the books there's money there yeah right and it's just not done right right and and you know tony listen you you, i I, want to say something you're not alone right there's a lot of shop owners who are where you're at or have been where you're at right i was there at one point and had no clue what any of it meant and and the the good thing about working with a coach is is then you learn what it is and you learn how to control those numbers you learn what affects what kpi so what adjustments i need to make and and it it gives you a sense of control right and so you you know at the beginning i'm over here looking at david giving him go to hell looks because he's just like you know going haywire over here marching on about like what to do what to do and i think a lot of it is because david needs that control right and that's how david controls his business and and the idea of not having that process or that knowledge or that that system in place where you can just look at the business and know what it needs to do is scary. Makes right? you crazy. Yeah, it yeah. will. A lot, of crazy, a lot of crazy shop owners out there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, and you know, Tony, this is what, well, that's, when you that's hear That's my us, fear is I don't understand it. Yeah. Right. And and so here's the thing is is when we, when you hear us talk about a lot of shop owners having a job, not a business, this is really where most of that comes from is because they, they are in a situation where they have a, job because they're not making the money that an owner would make they're completely tied to the business because it's not making enough gross revenue to get out of it right well and they and and they've made themselves essential to the day-to-day operation because that's what they know how to do yeah exactly and and, right yeah and i i guess it's not fun no it needs to be fun i'm sorry i I want to i i want to enjoy it it's not fun i like people I love people. I enjoy meeting them. I enjoy talking to them. I like solving problems. I'm not having any fun because I have no clue where I'm at. Well, one of our one of our core principles at at the institute is do the right thing. But the uh, one of the other core principles is it's got to be fun. Yeah. Because it should be fun, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. 